If you've ever tried to reach for something but couldn't, it may mean you're suffering from a symptom known as frozen shoulder, a little different from the cold shoulder. Dr. Bruce Hensel is here to explain a new procedure that could provide relief. Bruce? So a lot of people don't know the term, but a lot of people do suffer from the symptoms. Now, there are many different causes of tennis elbow and bursitis of the shoulder. But this particular problem, frozen shoulder, is much more painful and disabling than either of those. According to some doctors, without the procedure you're about to see, the cure is often as troublesome as the symptoms. It was um, an achiness and uh, just got slightly worse, but uh, when I really noticed it was that I woke up one morning and I went to reach for my glasses and I couldn't move my arm and I had excruciating pain. It just made me scream. Maria had what's appropriately called frozen shoulder syndrome. According to experts, it can be caused by a wide variety of things. A fall with direct uh, or indirect uh, injury to the shoulder causing a bruise, uh, which leads to inflammation, uh, overuse, uh, tendonitis, bursitis, um, chronic uh, bursitis. All of those conditions, which may have different mechanisms of injury or disease, have one thing in common. Normally, there's a good deal of space between the bones of the shoulder and the tissue surrounding them. In frozen shoulder, however, this space almost completely disappears. When the shoulder is frozen, all of these delicate tissues have settled down right on top of the, the, the bone so that it can't move. And that's, that's very much like an engaged disc break. When medicines, rest, and oral medications fail to solve the problem, the classical treatment is to admit the patient to the hospital, administer general anesthesia, and attempt to free the shoulder up with manipulation. Dr. Fareed practices something called hydroplasty. With the patient awake and the shoulder numbed by local injections, he slowly injects cold salt water into the joint. That allows uh, the patient to move their own shoulder and increase their normal range of motion. It also puts the medication right where the problem is. That also recreates the normal range of motion. Often the results are dramatic. I got uh, almost immediate relief. It was a little painful going through the procedure, having the needles and the fluid injected, but uh, almost immediately I began to feel uh, very good results, and it progressed. It just improved with exercises. And, and it stayed free and painless since Dr. Fareed first performed her hydroplasty. European doctors have used the procedure for years, but it's just now gaining acceptance here. <laughs> Although it does have its critics, Maria and Dr. Fareed feel very sure about its advantages. It's more rapid. It involves less uh, physical therapy. It uh, avoids the need for hospitalization. It avoids the expenses of uh, anas general anesthesia. And I have had no pain whatsoever. And I can move my arm completely everywhere. I have no restriction whatsoever. Feels great. Now, Dr. Fareed told me that hydroplasty is clearly, in his opinion, the way to go with most patients who have frozen shoulder. He says that 75% of the people he's treated have been cured with the procedure and that the other 25% have underlying problems that require other treatment as well. I should point out that other orthopedists claim that this particular procedure doesn't result in much difference from the classical treatment, which is a little more invasive. But it does represent an option if you have frozen shoulder, and if you haven't been helped by less invasive treatments, and you wish to avoid general surgery and general anesthesia, you may want to discuss the possibility with your doctor. So. Well, Bruce, what about those who can move their arms, but they always suffer pain each time? Well, you know, there's a lot of different uh, syndromes that cause that sort of a problem, bursitis, tendonitis. One of the things that some doctors do is they give steroid shots right away. You want to avoid that, and you want to avoid repeated steroid shots because that can cause a problem in the long term. Infla Anti-inflammatory medications and immobilization, this is something that some people with injuries like that don't do. You have to immobilize it for a couple of weeks because even if it's better after the first couple of days of treatment, it has to heal completely, otherwise it's just going to come back on you. A mm, couple of weeks though, huh? A couple of weeks, a couple of months sometimes. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Okay.